That's good. Thank you very much. Okay. Who are you and what is your name? <laughs> or I guess that's a thing. I am thing. Selby Minner and I play blues. Ooh, cool. Uh, what's your background? Well, I went to four years of art college back on the East Coast. I grew up in Providence and East Providence. And it was a very good art school. And I couldn't take music in high school because I went to the Catholic school and I got to the regular high school too late. So I uh, stuck with the art. I only had one elective, aced it. And when I went to arts college, I finally started meeting musicians. That's my lucky day. <laughs> I love to draw and do art, but I always did really want to sing. What role does the artist have in society? Oh, a lot of roles. We keep people's imaginations going. The arts build community. We bring people together. We have the creativity to jump start economies and rotted out broken down buildings where they let us make galleries and then tourist attractions. I've seen this. And then after 20 years of our galleries, the big galleries move in and all the local artists have to move back a block off the strip because so much in, in income's been generated by the imagination of the artists in old communities, I see it. How has your practice changed over time? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I, I, well, I married an interesting person, and he had a great dreams and visions, which became mine, which was to start a festival, reopen his grandmother's blues club, and then eventually start the Blues Hall of Fame. And I always had a band. I had it before I met DC. And then he taught me to be a much better musician. And then he passed away in eight, in 2008. So now he's also a good teacher. So I'm doing it all. I'm trying to keep the festival going. We're on number 24. And I'm uh, running my band. Jam session every Sunday. It's about five years old and inducting people into the Hall of Fame. It's busy. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, what art do you most identify with? Or music, whichever. Instrument. Oh, I love uh, people's art. I love the blues, and I love Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh, all of the Impressionists, the French painters. Yeah. What's your strongest memory related to art as a child? I was a little girl, and my mom and dad worked so hard they were not very happy stress. And one day my mom took me to an art show in the driveway of a lady named Violet Secor down in the country in Rhode Island. And it was art hanging in this pretty, pretty curved driveway with trees and things. And she had silver hair and the most beautiful smile I'd ever seen on an older woman with silver hair. And I thought to myself, well now, maybe I won't mind getting old. And maybe I'd be happy if I did art. Describe a real life situation that has inspired you. Oh, there's so many. So many. Every time I hear good music or see a beautiful sunset or see a great painting, I get inspired. Every time. <laughs> What's your most embarrassing moment related to art? Oh, not being able to tune the bass. Um... Not being able to, just thinking my amp's going to play, and I haven't even plugged it in. I'm electronically challenged, so that's kind of hard when an electronic musician. <laughs> um, what jobs have you done other than being an artist, if uh, any? Waitress. Um, I've taught a lot. Sign painter, that's an artist. Um, not an artist. Waitressing in here was my favorite job because of that was not exactly an artist. I hated waiters waitressing, but when I, oh, making jewelry as a kid in the jewelry mills in Rhode Island. That that's that's still kind of artist. Artists. No, it wasn't art. It was like, 
snapping lids onto, you know, little oh. plastic powder boxes for the entire summer piecework. Ooh. And working in an eyeglass factory and making sure that they didn't cut you when you touched them. And Ooh. Factory work. Uh, that inspired yeah, me to stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you dislike about the art world? Well, I think that uh, sometimes um, people... I saw a TV show on a rock and roller last night, and she, you know, she had been in a band, and then she got depressed, and she quit, and she became a junkie, and then she um, learned how to mix and do sound and run a recording studio, so then she has a project where she's inviting all these young artists to be in her project, and instead of nurturing them and teaching them, she started tearing them apart as, you're not the greatest band in the world, and acting like... She had something over on them because she was better known in the rock world than they were, and that's why I don't do rock and roll. It's the competitive thing. I'm a teacher, and I like to see people grow. So, uh, but like some of the world, like when I got out of art school, I had no interest in being part of the New York City gallery scene and going down there and spending 30 years trying to get an art show. So when I sang and passed the hat, and played my little guitar and made some money and they clapped. I said, well, I guess I better switch to music for real because I'm not going to sit around in a studio by myself and do art for 30 years waiting for somebody to discover me in New York City, that whole competitive thing that goes on in rock and in contemporary art. I, I don't like that part very much. What kind of research have you done to prep for your classes? To teach? Yeah. Play a lot. <laughs> It took me so long to learn to play the guitar that I have a lot of patience. <laughs> you know, I mean, really. I, <coughs> excuse me. Um, what kind of superpower do you want if you could have it? Oh, I would love to see funding for arts programming in all of the schools around the world. That'd be a superpower. That's a cool superpower. <laughs> <laughs> a money tree. <laughs> Well, funneled not into sports, but into yeah, the arts. Definitely. Yeah. Name something you love and why. Well, I love my life and I love the festival and I'd love to see it continue for another hundred years. So I would love to, we have a nonprofit and we have a great track record, 24 festivals. We've put a half a million dollars into the pockets of musicians who play this roots blues music, not rock blues, roots blues. And I would love to get set up with enough respect as a museum and the Hall of Fame and everything like that to get some kind of an endowment where we could get... It's a $60,000 party. If we could get $100,000 a year, people would be employed to keep this going for a long time, and I think that would be a great goal. Definitely. Well, the next one is, what is your dream project? <laughs> but I think that might, you might have already answered well, that one. Well, my dream projects are all in motion, pretty much. Eventually, I hope to retire to doing more art and less office work. You know, more sit down. I've started painting again and things, you know, but I don't have much time for that. So that would be to... We get funded and this stress gets taken out of this and I don't have to sell so many sponsorships that then that would be good. <laughs> Name three artists you'd like uh, to compare yourself to. Well, now, I'll, I'll tell you three artists that inspire me. Okay, that works. Van Gogh, mm -hmm. okay, Mary Cassatt, and then also um, Etta James for singing and B.B. King, Freddie King, Albert King, Albert Collins for guitar playing. That's more than three. <laughs> yeah, that worked. <laughs> um, let's see here. What would you do? What wouldn't you do without? If you if you could, if you were on an island and you could only have one thing, what would it be? Close friendship. <laughs> that worked. If you could, how would you change the world? I would do away with institutionalized racism, and I would help people see how boring it is if everybody's the same. I tell them all the time, I love variety is the spice of life. I wouldn't want to eat chicken three times a day. And if, if I hadn't 
realize the wealth of uh, in the friends that I've had in my life. And if I was racist, I would have missed my best friend. 32 years, see? So, like, I think if people would open their hearts, that would be great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. It's great <laughs> to see you. I've seen you grow. You're doing great.